Boxing Day, and I don't know what else. Let me know if you can hear me when you come on board. I'm going to turn up my volume a little bit. I'm just crocheting today, and I thought while I'm sitting crocheting for a bit, I would say hello and do a running monologue. I don't know if I'll be able to read your comments from here, so I will bring the camera a little closer because I don't have my glasses on. Hello, hello. I am crocheting today as I try to do every day. And um, this is the new studio room still. And so that's good. A little bit of wrapping paper up here. Anyway, today I am crocheting a hat. I don't know which side I like better. It's um, linked double crochets. Actually, it's linked treble crochets, I guess. And this is the wrong side, and this is the right side, but I don't like know which side I like better, so I'm just going to keep on going and see what happens. Worst case, I rip it out for the third time. Oh, there goes Theo. There goes Theo. Theo's up here. Let me turn the camera so you can see him. Hello! <laughs> Hello, let me know if you're here. I hope you had a great uh, Christmas if you celebrate and if you had a happy Hanukkah if you celebrate or maybe hopefully you're just having a nice Sunday afternoon day off if you're in this part of the world. I guess it's already Monday in some parts of the world so I hope everyone is well and staying healthy. What are you crocheting these days? Did you get any? Hi from Texas! Yes, hi Angela. I did have a very nice Christmas. We um we're mostly at home, which is good, which is fine. Did you have a nice Christmas? I didn't get any crochet-related gifts, but that's okay. Hello, Brian. Good to see you. So I'm just crocheting today. Um, Patrick is out at the movies, and Mara went to go get a friend, so I've got some time to myself, and uh, <laughs> the cats are looking out the window over there. Muffin is home with Mara. Um, we've had a weekend full of food, lots and lots of food, <laughs> and a little bit of crocheting. So like I said, I'm working on a hat. Mara has a bunch of new friends. Hello, friends, if you are listening, because I know a few of you crochet. So this is the hat that I am working on for one of them. Friends, can you guess which one? And um, the pets are swarming because they're curious what's going on. So lots of things in the works as usual. I'm sorry I haven't had any uploads the last 10 days, I think. It's just, you know, the holiday it got a little crazy there. So we are home now for a few days, which is so nice. And I actually have the window open today. In Southern Ohio, it is about 60 degrees, which is crazy warm for um, Christmas. So definitely not a white Christmas like we often hope for but instead it is a very very warm no jacket uh sweatshirt only kind of day outside very balmy matter of fact we were even talking about going to the zoo but i'm thinking the zoo is going to be crazy busy on such a nice day so um i don't know maybe we'll do that we've also been baking 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 a ton lots of food um like i said we were home we spent Christmas Eve with family and then uh, Christmas Day, it was just the four of us. And so I we basically cooked all day and made goodies all day. And um, so that was good. That was good. So what else is going on in the world? So Muffin is home with Mara. Muffin is currently up on the top tier of the cat tree. And Theo is on the lower uh, mid tier of the cat tree. They're both looking out the window over there. Hobie is running around. I hear his little clip, clip, clip of his claws. Did you get Christmas presents for your critters? And <laughs> we did. <laughs> Not a whole lot. Just some, you know, toys, a toy for each of them, and some treats. So nothing too crazy. I did get Muffin a bed for here. So she's here with us now. And um, when Mara travels, Muffin will stay with us. And so I did get her a bed for here, you know, because I call her my grand kitty. 
So I'm not ready for grandbabies, but I am loving having a grand kitty. <laughs> She's so sweet. Are you guys crocheting anything? Are you knitting? Are you weaving? Are you spinning? Did you get any gadgets for Christmas or, or Hanukkah? Did you get any good stuff? I'm still playing with my really awesome hook that I got at the, um, the wool festival, the Adirondack Sheep and Wool Festival that I went to with Haley. Love it, still love it. And I'm kind of surprised because it's like you can interchange the hook. And I'm kind of pleasantly surprised that it's still stays so like wonderfully tight like after using it I mean it is metal so it's not shrinking or anything but it still fits really nicely just snug enough that it stays in but not too snug that you can't undo it and it stays really stable while I'm crocheting it's not like it's not awkward or um precarious I don't feel like when I'm pulling the yarn that it's going to pull right out like you have to put a good amount of pressure on it so I'm low-key <laughs> thinking about getting a couple more because I love them so much. So Hobie is downstairs barking at nothing, I'm sure. So sorry about that. That's what happens when I'm home alone. He decides to uh, bark at the wind. And I do have the window open. Warm weather here. Good Christmas. All live close by. That's great. Oh, new bowls for your dog. Nice, nice. Yeah, so it's warm enough here that I have the window open, so that's probably why Hobie is freaking out because of the air coming in through the window. I turned off the heat two days ago just to, it was so hot with all the Christmas baking and Christmas cooking. So, so I'm sorry, I'm looking down while I'm crocheting and um, just working on these linked treble crochets in the round. It's kind of like Tunisian crochet mixed with um, linked treble crochets. So did all your, oh, 40s last week, gonna be in the 70s this week, winter in the south. Yep, that's you, isn't it? It rained all day yesterday, it rained a pretty good amount, and if it had been cooler, we would have had a nice uh, several inches of snow, but because it's so warm, it was just rain. So very warm, very warm. I don't know what to tell you about Hobie. He's just uh, barking at the wind. Good thing we're not in the city. Can you imagine? He would be barking at everything constantly. He probably sees a deer. <laughs> he still freaks out quite a bit when he sees deer. And we have a drive old driveway, and so every time he hears the crunch of tires on the gravel driveway, he's our canine doorbell. I'm sure many of you can relate. I don't know. I think this, I think, I don't know. I don't know which side of this hat I like better, if I like the right side or the wrong side. I don't know. I might do some surface slip stitch on it as well. So here's what a granddaughter and grand, oh, came today. So I don't see, I don't like the seam. So I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. So this is technically the right side and this is technically the wrong side, but I kind of like the wrong side better. I don't know. And then I'm thinking about if I keep this the right side, I am going to crochet up the seam and kind of seam that together a little bit more gracefully. And I don't know if I'll do like surface slip stitch in the grooves. I don't know. We'll keep going and see what happens. At least it matches my eyes at the moment, but it's not for me. It's not for me. This is an old skein of Downton Abbey Matthew that I had left over. I don't think they even make this yarn anymore, but that's okay. So it's a green tweed. So did you hear Pr Premier Yarn, who made this? Premier Yarn bought Barocco. I saw a press release about that recently. I was like, oh no. Crochet assistant Theo. Yes, I did have a good Christmas. Thank you. Theo is great. You guys want to see him? I don't think he's, uh, if I can move the camera so you can see him. Is that going the right way? 
So he's over there on the bottom of the the round part of the cat tree, and Minnie's at the, or Muffin is at the top. So Theo is right there. <laughs> anyway, so the crochet assistant Theo is doing well. He's I think he doesn't eat as well when the kids are not home. And so he's enjoying having them home and he's eating quite a bit more. <laughs> he and Muffin chase each other around quite a bit. They don't really snuggle much, but they, they're next to each other on the cat tree. So that's good. I guess that's as good as it gets. At least they're not fighting. Hobie and Theo wrestle quite a bit, but, um, Hobie is a very, very gentle dog, and he seems to know that he is bigger and stronger than Theo, so he actually holds back. You have a granddaughter who loves green. You like the wrong side. Okay, thanks for that vote, because I don't know what I'm doing, and it may I may change my mind and rip the whole thing out, so I don't know. We will see. Um... Theo, uh, uh, Hobie knows that he's bigger and stronger than Theo, so he does a really wonderful job of um, stopping playing every few seconds and just sitting down and being submissive and letting Theo decide if he wants to keep wrestling or not. So that's good. So that's good. So I don't know. I don't know if I like this or not, but I don't know. I've already ripped it out once, so... Sometimes when things are not clicking, you have to just commit to something and keep going until you figure it out. I did not really make any crochet gifts this year. I was, I was thinking about making some and then time got away from me. Hobie! <laughs> Hobie! Come here, Theo. Oh, this place, we have so many pets right now. Come here, buddy. You wanna be on camera and say hi to everybody? Mm -hmm. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Oh, my big fat cat. <laughs> He's such a good boy. Aren't you a good boy, Theo? Yeah. <laughs> Good afternoon from Saskatchewan, Canada. Nice to see you. Okay, I'm putting you down. I'm putting you down. There you go. See you, Brian. Have a great day. All right. So I just thought I would crochet a bit. Anybody out there want to, are you, what, are you actively crocheting on anything at the moment? Hobie. <laughs> Come on. He's not usually this barky. Trying to get your Crojo back. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a crazy time of year and, you know, the pandemic and, you know, there's so much going on in the world that uh, we just have to keep doing the best we can, right? <laughs> That's all we can ask for. He never barks like this. Only when I turn on the camera and I'm the only one home does he bark like this. So hopefully he will stop and give up. No, he's not. <laughs> Great. He must be weirded out by the open window down there. Anyway, I'm just stitching along. Did you watch any good Christmas movies this year? Taking a break from cleaning your yarn room, so you're working on a dragonfly poncho. Ooh, that's amazing. Is that the one by Lisa Nasgrant? Who's the designer of that one? Um, I'm thinking a couple people have made ones called a dragonfly, unless you designed it yourself. So much fun. It's important to keep crocheting though. It's, I mean, even if you kind of put your expectations to the side and just crochet for the process and the relaxation and the meditation of it all and not worry about the end result so much, just the process of kind of meditating or sitting or praying or whatever you do when you're crocheting, uh, chilling, 
is um, really useful. So remember, <laughs> crochet is a relaxing and valuable use of our time, right? So it's good for us. So I'm just gonna keep right on stitching. Yeah, I kind of think I do like the wrong side better. I don't know. I don't know. I guess I could make it reversible. This kind of is starting to remind me of the hat that Radar used to wear in MASH. <laughs> I could get like and flip up the little brim. It's kind of an army green color, not quite as dark, but not sure of the original designer. You've been doing it for years. Cool. Yeah, I want to get back on the, I always have such big plans. <laughs> I always have such big plans and it's like, oh, I got to get it done. So there's so many things on my to-do list that I want to do. And it just seems like there's never enough time to do them all. But I've got the uh, the uh, greenery blanket that we're working on that needs a few more votes. So I know if you want to keep going. And we've got the uh, Ellen's Big Game series. It, cute with a brim. Thank you. Good morning from Washington. Snowing. Sing. Oh, thank you. Of course. Happy Hanukkah to you. And I love my fur babies too. Doing a mashup, creating multimedia with button embroidery and embellishing. Cool, Karen, that sounds really exciting. Oh, behind me, oh, you can't see it. Behind me, that up right there is a little embroidery stitchery that I did in college in one of my design classes. And it's about five inches by five inches, maybe four and a half by four and a half of cro embellishing uh, lots of different um, em uh, embroidery stitches in a little piece. <laughs> so that was my uh, contribution to the stitchery world that wasn't yarn. So, okay, sorry about that. Okay, snowing in Washington. Well, I guess it has to snow somewhere. Hobie! <laughs> Come on, buddy. Uh, he's gonna wear himself out, I assume. He'll have to wear himself out at some point. It's embarrassing. He's usually so well behaved. Hey there, cream peonies, nice. Nice to see you. Thanks so much for joining me, everybody. If you get a chance, hit the like button. But otherwise, we're just sitting out here having a little monologue. 60s to 70s in KC, Kansas City. Cool. And actually cool, but not cold. Like it's usually so much colder here. The lighting is weird today. It's usually so much colder in December in Southwest Ohio, but whatever it will take what we get so i don't know is it global warming i don't know i don't want to start the debate i'm not a scientist i just know it's warmer than it usually is today and yesterday we had hoped to have some snow yesterday but that didn't happen we did not get a white christmas in ohio in southern ohio So this is uh, just a really nice, I like having Christmas on Friday. <laughs> that was kind of, the schedule worked out for us. You have a Sheltie and he is a yapper. Hobie's not usually a yapper. That's why I'm confused. He usually only yaps when he sees a deer or he hears someone deliver or pull into our driveway. And I'm the only one home and I don't know why he's just barking for no reason, but whatever. I know that's not his signal that he needs anything because he use, has a doorbell for that, that he goes and rings a jingle bell on our doorknob if he needs something. So I guess he's, uh, I mean, there could be a dog in the yard or a cat in the yard or a bunny or a squirrel or who knows, but he's usually not so yappy. 
Theo has now relocated to an armchair over here, and so he's uh, found a sunny spot. Muffin is still asleep on the top of the cat tree. And Minnie, the cat, lives in the basement, so she is there. She's got a comfy little house and a big room to herself, so she's doing fine. And she got Christmas presents too. They all got Christmas presents. Yeah, he does. He rings the jingle bell. So we just have a like a long piece that hangs from the doorknob and it has a couple big jingle bells on it. And when he wants to go outside, he just hits it with his nose. Yeah, he is telling the deer to get off his grass. That is absolutely the truth. He, I'm sure he would if he saw deer. Although he might be going a little more nuts if he saw a deer. He's still, ups he's still upset that the one deer attacked him back in, what, July of 2020? So, um, yeah, so he's got a thing out. He's got a, <laughs> he's triggered by deer for sure. He still has PTSD from the deer attack, which I don't blame him. I get it. So, yes, so we trained him when he was a puppy. You know, whenever we, we took him out, we took him out that one door that had the bell on it so that he knew he would associate the bell ringing with opening and going in and out that door. So now he just goes and hits it with his nose when he wants to go out. Snowing really good outside your front. Later you might take a stab at walking to the store to close, close to your home. Okay, yeah, walk into your store. Hopefully you have everything you need and you're just walking for fun or exercise or whatever. Stay safe out there. If you can safely walk, that doesn't mean people can safely drive. But you know that. I'm just being a mom. You know, I just can't help it. So. There's no bad weather, only bad uh, wardrobe choices, right? <laughs> you can dress properly for any weather. You'll be comfortable. So I do have a lot of big plans. I have so much that I want to do crochet wise especially so it's time to get back on it now that the uh, most busy part of the holiday for us is over we've got one more family get together um soon I hope it it's supposed to be Wednesday but my brother tested positive for COVID so he's at home and um I don't he, he will still need to be quarantined at least um, for another week or so, and hopefully he doesn't get any worse. Yeah, we get snow usually January and February more than we do in November and December, and um, some of the biggest snowfalls really have been early March even, so here in Southern Ohio. So we do have one more family get together with my brother and his family, but since he's got COVID, then we need to obviously wait. So I don't know when that's gonna happen. I just hope it happens before um, Mara and Patrick uh, go back to school so that they can come too. So Patrick will go back to campus um, the first or sec the second week of January. And Mara's actually hoping that she can travel abroad for her next semester. Um, it's all booked. It's all booked and ready to go. But with COVID, it just seems like you just don't know until the moment happens. So I just pray that she can get to go on her trip, and um, she'll be away for a semester at studying at another university. And I just really hope it happens because she's running out of time in her college career to be able to do this and. Um, COVID has really knocked everybody off their, off their game. And we've, you know, just lost so much, obviously, people, which is the most important thing. But then we've also lost, you know, opportunities. And, you know, I guess we've gotten some opportunities to realign our priorities, too. But it just, there's, you know, I don't have to tell you. It's been crazy, crazy hard to fathom. Uh, you know, how the world has been affected the last two years, two years. So I just remember that, you know, March 13th or whatever, it was a Friday and my boss was like, oh, you know, before you leave for work today, you know, take, 
you know, two weeks worth of pictures of the therapy dog, you know, doing silly things so that we can post it because the kids are going to have to be home and do home study um, probably for two weeks until this whole thing blows over. <laughs> so it's like, oh, how naive we were. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sure he'll be fine. But thank you so much. I, I'm I hope he'll be fine. You just don't really know how people will react to COVID, do you? But I think he'll be fine. I hope he'll be fine. So, um, so far, so good. Um, anyway, it's so funny, not funny, ironic how, you know, we just thought, oh, it'll blow over in, a, in two weeks. And it's like, here we are almost two years later and we're still um, dealing with it. And so, um, it's just been a long two years. I'm praying for all of us that 2022 is the year when everything turns around to um, a year of blessings and abundance and hopefulness and um, resilience. Hello from Australia. Hello. So it's 2.45 in the afternoon here in Ohio. So does that make it four in the morning, five in the morning in Australia. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So is it, I think it's, is it Monday morning at like four or five in the morning in Australia? Well, good morning. <laughs> How does tomorrow look? Is tomorrow going to be a good day? I'm hoping that 2022 will be good for all of us. It's 6.45 in the morning. Thank you, Leslie. Good morning to you. I hope you have a great day today. So I hope that, yes, we did. Hi, Bratz mom. Hi, how are you? We did have a Merry Christmas. I was telling everybody that um, the cats and the dog all got some treats and, um, to and each one got a toy. And it's really funny because Muffin, I got her one of those like cat cave Crocheting a scarf in Northeast Indiana, cloudy, and in the red for COVID-19. Oh, your daughter's birthday was the day, that day in March in 2020. Oh, gosh, you lost your nephew. Oh, no. Yeah, oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's just, I'm so sorry for all the people we have lost and all the first responders who've worked so hard. So I'm not going to talk about it too much more because I just get teary just thinking about all the people that we don't have with us this year. Okay, so I'm making a hat and it's linked treble crochets, which is kind of like Tunisian. This is the wrong side, but I think I kind of like it better than the right side. So the right side, if I keep it, I was thinking about putting surface slip stitch around in the grooves between rows, but I really don't like how the seam is turning out. So no matter what I do, I'm probably going to pick a side and then crochet the seam more so that it's less ugly. <laughs> but I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just playing for now. And so much of how I design is just play. So... This is what I've got so far, and I've already ripped out once, but I don't know. I kind of like this side better. The seam is less ugly on this side also, so I might keep this. I don't know, but I'm working on it. So let's talk just a few more minutes. Yeah, oh yeah. Th Steve, it is Downton Abbey, which is an old yarn, so I, they don't make it anymore. It was by Premier. This one's called Matthew. This is a, um, a wool viscose acrylic uh, tweed number four yarn. And um, hello, yarny friends. Hello to you. So, um, but it's nice. And you should be able to find something similar in another brand um, because it's, it's not that cutting edge. <laughs> it's not that trendy that it, you shouldn't be able, you should be able to find a green number four tweed made by somebody so oh you like the front also thank you yeah i don't know what i want we'll see it's okay sometimes it's nice to just crochet without expectation you know less seam you have that oh yeah you have that this yarn too but then yeah if frogging is 
Frogging is the thing. It's okay. Sometimes it's okay to just crochet without expectation and we'll see what develops and not worry about it too much. I'm gonna yell, Hobie! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> He's crazy. Why is he so crazy today? Maybe it's too much sugar from the holidays. I know I've had an awful lot of sugar. <laughs> Made, I made cheesecakes and I don't know what happened some I, I don't know what happened because I usually nail it on this cheesecake I have one recipe that I like a whole lot and I make two nine inch pie plates of cheesecake and I put chocolate chips in one of them and plain for the other usually and it and the recipe is perfect to um, make two nine inch pie plates of cheesecake well, something happened, I don't know what I did, and I had a whole lot of batter left over. So I got another glass dish and threw some Oreos down and just threw the batter on top and baked that also. So um, I used the Oreos just as a crust. So it turned out okay, I mean, it tasted good, but like all the chocolate chips like sunk to the bottom and it came out really narrow thin and flat compared to what it normally is i don't know what i did wrong but it still tasted good but then also because tom and patrick don't like cheesecake mara and i do uh, i also got one of those chocolate silk pies by marie calendars which is just so good like why even bother to make one <laughs> so we had that as well in addition to the peanut butter blossom cookies you play with your projects? Yeah, absolutely. I'm just playing. You know, it's that's the whole point of crochet. Well, there's lots of points to me. Mostly, it's to have a relaxing and valuable use of our time. And we'll, whether valuable means relaxation and just having fun, um, doing something methodical and meditative, or something that has a product that you can use or give. Like all of those are wonderful side effects of crocheting. So I don't really care which one that we're doing. Cheesecake, yes, yes, I love the cheesecake. So we don't make cheesecake too often, but um, since it was just the four of us yesterday, I really tried to make a dinner and dessert to make everybody happy in the house. So we um, started off with a really big breakfast. I made you know, two different egg casseroles and pancakes, blueberry and chocolate chip pancakes. And I had a bacon egg casserole. And then I had a egg white, red pepper and spinach casserole with Monterey Jack. And then we, um, by the time we ate all that, that was lunch too. So that was a big brunch. And then we had dinner later. Let's see. You know what? If I had turned rows, I wonder what would have happened if I had turned at the end of each row. I guess that's what I'll try next time, isn't it? So just keep right on playing. But yes, I think that it's still fun to play with crochet and not worry about the end result. Like it's still worth it to um, experiment and be spontaneous and um, learn and rest and um, so many of my favorite projects have evolved from a mistake. <laughs> so maybe this will end up being one of them where I started out and it didn't turn out the way I wanted, but hope maybe it'll turn out even better than I had ever hoped. <laughs> and that is, that is um, sometimes the case. So it's really a good practice to just put all my expectations and hopes aside and just allow it to evolve the way it needs to and hope that I end up with something of value. And if I don't and I have to frog it out, at least I had a valuable time. <laughs> so it's still cheaper than going to a movie, you know, when you, when you figure out the number of hours you spent times, well, depending on how much your yarn is, but it's a really... Um, valuable um, l leisure time activity. I mean, going to movies is great. Patrick is in a movie now, but I mean, you spend 10 bucks or whatever on a ticket and that's two, two hours of entertainment and then you never get it back again. Well, this five bucks of yarn is costing me way more than two hours. So it's a good use of money. 
Am I gonna make something with a crocodile stitch? I love chocolate and peanut butter. Just don't don't add peanut butter. <laughs> chocolate is the best. We did um, make Buckeyes here too, which is, um, I don't know if you're not from Ohio, maybe you don't know, but um, the Buckeye tree is the state prayer shawl. Oh, good. Oh, good. Colon cancer. Oh, gosh. Okay. So um, the Buckeye tree, I have state Buckeyes. The Buckeye tree is the state tree or whatever. And it has these big nuts on them that are Buckeyes, just like the school. And so they're, but they're actually poisonous to eat. So don't eat them. But we make a candy that is a peanut butter, butter, and powdered sugar ball. And then it's dunked in, three quarters of the way dunked into um, dark-ish semi-sweet chocolate so that you just see like a circle of peanut butter on top. So it looks like the Buckeye the nut that you can't eat because it's poisonous, but it's actually all chocolate and peanut butter. And even though we are not big Ohio State Buckeye fans, because Tom went to Michigan, the candy is fantastic. So we did make Buckeye candy, and um, Tom likes to uh, affectionately call them Wolverines. <laughs> so I don't even really care because I didn't go to Ohio State and I didn't go to Michigan, so I don't, I just think it's funny. So um, I don't even know what I was saying before that. So I did a lots of sugar. You said you love chocolate as long as you don't put peanut butter in it, but I also make things with peanut butter. The peanut butter blossom cookies also are peanut butter cookies with a um, chocolate Hershey Kiss on top. So that's a, another chocolate peanut butter um, thing. My favorite cookie, Christmas cookie that we made though, is um, we our family calls them crinkles. And so Tree of Life Afghan, oh wow, that'll be gorgeous. Is that, um, I'm trying to remember her name. I can see her face. Our birthdays are the same week. Lorinda, Lorinda Reddig, is that a Lorinda Reddig pattern? Tree of Life, anyway. Uh, my favorite cookie we made the other day is it's basically a chocolate sugar cookie and you make it in a ball and you roll it in powdered sugar and then you bake it and when it bakes it breaks up the powdered sugar so it looks like cracked earth like a like a volcano but it's um a chocolate soft chocolate sugar cookie with white powdered sugar yum yum <laughs> i love that <laughs> So those are really, really good too. Crinkles, we call them crinkles. Um, so do you have a favorite Christmas cookie? Your daughter made some for Christmas and gave them as gifts. Oh yeah, totally. Are you talking about the Buckeyes? That um, The Buckeye candy, did your daughter make those? Some people have never heard of them if they're not in Ohio, but I, you know, certainly they travel far and wide <laughs> and the, the new, the word of them maybe has gotten spread and gotten out. Um, but yes, yeah, so we've had a lot of sugar the last few days. And let's see the hat. Things evolve from a mistake. It is worth it to crochet even if you don't end up with the product you were hoping for. A lot of times I do design and I make a mistake and then I go with it and I like it even better than I thought I would. So that's why I call myself an organic designer. Like I usually let things evolve. Relaxing, fun, friends, yes, and grandkids. Crinkles, oh, she made the crinkles. Oh, excellent, excellent. They're excellent cookies. They're, they're pro I think they might be my new favorite. <laughs> I say that every year with something, but um so let's see. So that's what I mean by I'm an organic designer. I often just start crocheting and see what happens and I let it evolve. And then there's other people who are more um, structured or planned designers. Okay, see you, Cheryl. Thank you so much for stopping in. Happy New Year to you. Um, there's other people who are more planned designers who um, and who I immediately think of is Robin Chichula. She's amazing and can like, think it through and chart it and like imagine the whole design ahead of time. And then she takes some, takes it from her imagination and creates it in yarn. So she 
can even write the pattern before she even begins, which blows my mind away. But me, I have to just do it and then write it down. Like I, I and I change it as I go. So it, I think it's that changing it as I go that is why I call it organic. Like it grows on its own and sometimes it just develops. Um, and I have a hard time like envisioning what I want a lot of times and I don't, I certainly never write the pattern first, but I might sketch out like what I mean. <laughs> Chocolate cracked earth cookies sounds great to you. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. I think you can get the hint of what it's like. I, I have some downstairs. I got to go get some, but I don't want to get the powdered sugar all over my yarn. All right. Well, I guess I should go. The dog is finally quiet. Oh, finally, finally quiet. And I'm going to keep right on stitching, put my feet up and enjoy this relaxing and valuable day. I hope you guys had a great Christmas and are going to have a wonderful, everyone, a wonderful, happy, abundant, peaceful, uh, prosperous new year full of joy and health. Um, so we will keep moving forward together and hope that, you know, prayers for all of us and best wishes and put goodness out into the universe and try and be good people and, uh, and hope for the best, right? <laughs> all right. Good to see everybody again. Thank you so much for joining me and I can't wait to make more videos for you in 2022. Let's hit that 9,000 subscribers mark so I can do the next giveaway and the 10,000 subscribers mark so I can do the big giveaway. So uh, please subscribe if you haven't already and uh, ooh, red velvet cheesecake. <laughs> That's one way to distract me. So take care, everyone, and uh, keep your hooks moving and enjoy your time off. Hopefully you're having a nice day off. And um, for all of you who are back to work on Monday because you're in Australia on your way to work, maybe, or on your way to your a regular Monday, have a great day. And I will see you hopefully with a video on Wednesday. <laughs>